Estonia, the ship that sank in 1994 in the Baltic Sea. Today, we're going to look at what happened to the Estonia in the mid-1990s. Please subscribe to our channel History of Ships. Help us to make more good content for you. Now straight on with the Estonia. The incident occurred around seven years after the infamous Herald of Free Enterprise and although the case is different. Ultimately, both the caused by a fatal loss of stability due to the free surface effect. It was the 27th of September 1994 and the cruise ferry Estonia was completing her loading in the port of Tallinn. She was 155 meters long with a gross tonnage of 15 and a half thousand tons. As a cruise ferry, she was kind of a hybrid between a cruise ship and a ferry with a capacity of around 2,000 passengers and over 400 cars. To get vehicles aboard, she had an opening at the bow. The outer section or visor gave weather protection and formed part of the outer hull. When in port, that would hinge up exposing the loading ramp, which could lower down onto the quay so that traffic could drive straight onto the vehicle deck. On that day, she completed loading in the late afternoon, the ramp closed, sealing the deck, and the visor was lowered down, giving protection to the ramp. At around quarter past seven o'clock in the evening, she left the berth to begin her passage to Stockholm in Sweden, where she was due to arrive at 9.30 the following morning. On departure, she had a slight list to starboard due to the loading of the cargo. Too much weight had been placed on the starboard side, which shifted the center of gravity slightly off the center line. It wasn't too bad and only actually resulted in a list angle of a degree or two. Throughout the evening, Estonia continued on passage, running at full speed as the wind and weather continued to build. By midnight, the wind had increased to 30 or 40 knots from the southwesterly direction with 3 to 4 meter waves. The ship's starboard list had increased since departure, mainly because the wind was on the port side. Now Estonia did have healing tanks. These are water tanks used to keep vessels upright for both stability and for the comfort of passengers. With a starboard list, you can pump some water onto the port side to bring the ship back upright, but once that port tank's full, you've done all you can, and the ship's just going to continue with the list. In Estonia's case, she still carried three to four degrees of starboard list. They use the forward motion of the ship to generate a rioting force in the same way in aircrafts the wing generates lift. Crucially though, fine stabilizers can dampen a roll, but they don't do anything to help with the pitching. That pitching motion meant the bow was rising up and down, slamming into the waves, the visor taking the full impact of each wave. At around 1 o'clock am, a loud bang was heard. It was the secured in bolts on the bottom of the visor failing. Over the course of the next 15 minutes or so, the visor flapped around damaging the hull and the loading ramp. Water started entering the vehicle deck around the sides of the ramp where the seal was broken. Within about 15 minutes, the visor broke free completely, ripping the ramp open and falling away striking the boldest bow as it sank. Given the wide open nature of the vehicle deck, the free surface effect from the water entering rapidly led to a complete loss of stability. The effect is easily illustrated in a wide open space with water sloshing around. With a smallest angle, the water rushes to the lowest side, adding more weight to that side. This moves the center of gravity further out from the center line. The free surface effect meant Estonia rapidly developed a list over to starboard. Now, a peculiarity of Estonia's design meant that the bow visor was not visible from the navigational bridge due to the accommodation. They had an indication panel, but that showed everything was okay. Obviously because the sensors was still in place, the officers had no idea the visor had broken free. They assumed the list was caused by the weather, so they tried altering course to port to change the relative direction though, and ultimately, that maneuver actually accelerated the list, which passed 90 degrees in a matter of minutes. At around 20 past one, the first official mayday call from the Estonia was transmitted. VDR regulations were also subsequently updated to improve post-accident. Investigations and things like rescuing from listing ships and improved damage stability requirements were all modernized as well. Today, the wreck of the Estonia still lays in international waters in the spot where she came to rest that night. 
The entire site falls under the protection of an international treaty, the Estonia Agreement, which was signed into force in 1995. And that brings us to the end of today's video. If you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive notifications when I post new content. Until next time, thank you for watching 